Hello and welcome to the Invent with Scratch screencast. I'm Al Swigert and in this screencast we're going to make a basketball game. So this game has a lot of the same things that our double jump demo had, except now we also have a basketball that we can try to throw through this hoop that's constantly moving around. Oh. Got it. Alright, let's see how this game is put together. Go ahead and click on the Create button to start up the Scratch Editor. And, as I said before, this code will look a lot like the code from our Double Jump example, so we'll have moving left and right while doing the walking animation, and also jumping up and have gravity pull the player down. And gravity will also pull the basketball that we throw down as well. So the very first thing that we'll do is go to the Brown Events section and grab that When Green Flag Clicked block, and then add a forever loop underneath that, and this forever loop will constantly be checking if we're holding down the left and right arrow keys to move the cat to the left and right. So from the light blue sensing category, grab this key space pressed block, and click on the black triangle to change this to the left arrow, and so when the left arrow key is pressed, we'll want to move to the left, so click on motion and then how about instead of changing x by a certain number we'll actually just change the direction of the sprite i'll click on the black triangle and select left and then we'll just move 10 steps in the direction that the sprite is facing at the same time we're going to go to the purple look section and grab this next costume block and that'll switch the costume to the next costume on this list and so it'll constantly switch back and forth and give us this nice walking animation. We can test this out by clicking on the green flag. Oh, that's kind of weird how the cat just walks upside down on its head. We can fix that by clicking on the info panel for this sprite and then changing this to the left-right rotation style. That way the cat is always facing upright no matter which direction it's facing. And I'll rename this sprite while we're here. Cat. So we'll need this same code for moving in the right direction, but instead of going through the different categories and grabbing all those blocks again, I'll just right-click on the if block and then select duplicate from the menu, and then snap that into place right under there, and then you just make some changes to have this go in the right direction. So if the right arrow key is pressed, we'll want to face in the right direction. Move 10 steps can stay the same because we'll just move in the direction that the sprite is pointed to, and next costume will stay the same. So we can test this out by clicking on the green flag. All right, click on the red stop button to stop the program. Next, we're gonna have to add code that implements gravity. So if you remember from the double jump demo, if the cat is ever above the ground level, then we want gravity to start pulling the cat down faster and faster until the cat is at the ground level. But because the cat's falling down, the cat might fall past the ground level. So we also want to add code that detects if the cat is underneath the ground level and then just set the cat at ground level. So we can do that by first clicking on the orange data category and click on make a variable and we'll call this variable cat falling speed. Now go to the orange control section and grab an if else block. If the cat is beneath the ground level, then it'll snap the cat back to ground level. Or if it's in midair above ground level, then the cat starts falling back towards the ground. So I'll go to the green operator section, grab this less than block, We'll say the ground level is the Y position of negative 130, which means the cat will be right here. So we can go to the dark blue motion category and say when the cat's Y position is less than negative 129, we'll go ahead and just set the cat's Y position to negative 130. And then also we'll set the cat's falling speed to zero because if the cat's on the ground, the cat's not going to be falling anymore. Otherwise, we'll say the cat is in midair, so in that case we want to change the cat's falling speed by negative 2. 
And finally, after this entire if-else block, we'll want to change the cat's y position by whatever value is in cat falling speed. So go to the blue motion category and grab that change y by. And we'll change this not by this static number 10, but by whatever number is in cat falling speed. So let's test this out. Click on the green flag. We can pick up the cat with the mouse. You can see the cat falls faster and faster. So the cat's falling speed starts off at zero, and when I let go, the cat's falling speed gets more and more negative, and that causes the cat to move faster and faster downwards. And now if we want to implement jumping, all we have to do is move this over, and I'll stop the program. But let's go to the brown events category and grab this when space key pressed button. And we use the left and right arrow keys to move left and right, so let's use the up arrow to make the cat jump. Now we only want the cat to be able to jump if the cat is already on the ground, so let's grab an if block. And if the cat is on the ground, that is, if the cat's y position is exactly negative 130. So y position from the dark blue motion category, 130. And to make the cat jump, we just have to set the cat falling speed variable to some positive number, say 20, and then move the cat off the ground. So change y by the cat falling speed. So this will set cat falling speed to 20 and move the cat off the ground, at which point this condition will be false, and so change cat falling speed will constantly be subtracted by 2. So at first the cat changes its y position by 20, so it goes up, and then by 18, so it goes up again, but a little bit less, so it slows down a bit, and then 16 and 14, until finally it gets to about 4, 2, and then 0, where it stops rising, and then 0 minus 2 is negative 2, so then the cat starts moving downwards, because changing the y value by a negative number moves the cat down. So we can test this out. I'll just press the up arrow key. Perfect. Now let's add the basketball sprite, and Scratch gives us that already, so we can click on choose a sprite from library. And go to the things category. Here it is, basketball. Now we don't always want the basketball to be on the stage. We want it to be hidden until the player presses the space key, at which point the basketball will appear wherever the cat is and then be thrown in a sort of arch. So first things first, let's go to the brown events category and grab that when green flag clicked block. And then go to the data section. And we're also gonna make a new variable called score that keeps track of how many baskets the cat has made. And so at the very beginning of the program, we'll want to reset score back to zero. And then the basketball should just hide itself at the very beginning of the program. And the basketball doesn't really do anything, it just stays hidden until the space key is pressed. So grab that when space key pressed block. First we want to go to the cat. So remember the basketball's still hidden, but we can still move it around. So go to the dark blue motion category, grab this go to block and click on the black triangle to move it to the cat. And then we'll click on looks to show the block, to show the basketball. And we need to give the basketball its own falling speed variable. So click on the orange data category and click on make a variable. And we'll say this variable's name is basketball falling speed. And we'll go ahead and set that basketball falling speed to a positive number so it moves up and then go ahead and move it off of the ground level since it'll be at negative 130 since we just moved it to the, where the cat is. That is if the cat throws it while it's on the ground. So grab the change y by block and we'll just change this by basketball falling speed and now go to the orange control section. We won't need a forever loop, we'll just use this repeat until loop. And we want this basketball to be thrown up and moving as gravity dictates until it reaches the ground level, at which point 
it'll disappear and be hidden just like it was at the very beginning of the game. So as long as the Y position is less than negative one. So grab Y position is less than negative 129. We'll always have the basketball move forward by say about eight pixels each loop and then change Y by the falling speed and just to make it look a little interesting, we'll have the basketball slowly rotate as it's being thrown. Not that much. We can just grab this turn right and have it rotate by 6 degrees. And after it reaches the ground, it'll exit through this loop and continue on. And so at that point, we know it's on the ground level again because this condition will be true. At that point, hide the basketball. Let's test this out. Wow, that didn't work at all. The reason that happened is because we don't actually ever change the basketball falling speed. It's just constantly 24, so it's only going to go up. We need to go back to the orange data section and change the basketball falling speed by negative 2. So let's try that again. Yeah, that seems to work pretty nicely. Next, let's draw that basketball hoop that'll float around. So I'm going to click on Paint New Sprite. And I'll just make it a red hoop. So let's switch to vector mode and choose the ellipse tool. And just draw a loop. That's a pretty good sized loop. And be sure to center the hoop right in the center of the sprite where those crosshairs are. And the code for the hoop is going to be pretty simple. All it does is just hover around the screen randomly. So go to the brown events section. When the green flag is clicked, it'll enter into a forever loop. And we just want it to glide around. So go to the dark blue motion category and grab this glide block. And the X and Y coordinates that it'll glide to will be completely random. So let's go to the operator section and grab these pick random blocks and put those in for the X and Y. And we can just change these to say anywhere from X of negative 240 to 240 and a Y from negative 50 to the very top of the stage at 180. All right, now we want some code that detects when the basketball has made a basket. And we could add code that just detects when the basketball... I'll go ahead and make it show itself. We could just detect when the basketball is touching the hoop, but then it would also score a basket if the basketball is just slightly touching the hoop. So if the basketball fell like this, we really wouldn't consider that to be a basket, but our code would. So we need to do something a bit more specific to make sure that the basket only registers if it touches the center of the hoop. And to do that, we'll go ahead and make a new sprite. Paint new sprite. And this sprite will be incredibly simple. We'll just make it a single white pixel at the very center. So it's kind of hard to see the mouse cursor, but just click once, right there. And so our sprite is sort of impossible to see on the stage because it's just one tiny white pixel somewhere here. But if we go to the script section, the only code that we need for this hoop center is to always follow where the hoop is going. So in the events category, grab that when green flag is clicked, and it'll enter into a forever loop, and all this hoop center sprite does in fact, that's what I'll name it, hoop center. And this will be hoop. The only thing that this hoop center sprite does is follow the main hoop sprite, and it'll be centered right in the center of that sprite. So go to the dark blue motion category and grab this go to block and go to hoop. So now, as this hoop is moving around, the hoop center sprite is right there in the center of it. So now we can have the basketball detect if it touches the center hoop sprite rather than just anywhere on the hoop. 
hoop, hoop. You ever say a word so often that it stops sounding like a word? Hoop, hoop. Anyway, let's go to the basketball code and add some code here while it's in midair that detects if it's touching the hoop center. So what we need is an if block right here. And then we'll go to the blue sensing category and grab this touching. And if it's touching the hoop center, then go ahead and increase the score by one. So grab this change variable block. And the variable we want to change is score by one. So let's try this out. Click on the green flag to test it. That's pretty good, except that's sort of weird how the score is now four, even though we want only made one basket. And the reason that happens is similar to the reason why the whack -a cat game that we did previously registered multiple points for one hit. Inside this loop, this loop is looping so fast that before the basketball has a chance to get away and not touch the hoop center, we've already looped through here four times, which is why this change score by one block was executed four times. So we need to add a new variable that will detect when this is the first time that the score has been changed. So go ahead and click on make a variable and we'll have this be named made basket. And we'll set made basket to false when the player first hits the space key. So that'll reset it back to false each time the player throws a basketball. And whenever it does score a point, we'll set made basket to true. But then we only want the program execution to enter this if block if it's both touching the hoop center and also if made basket is false. So we'll need to go to the green operator section and grab this and block. So touching hoop center, but also made basket has to be equal to false. So the first time it enters this if block, made basket will be equal to false, so it changes score by one, but then it also sets made basket to true. That way when it loops again, this part of the condition will be false, so we skip this if block, and we won't execute change score by one again until the next time that the player presses the space key, and that's when we reset made basket to false. So let's test this out. Oh, that's kind of nice. Let's add some visual indication that the player has made a basket. Go to the brown events category and grab this broadcast block. And we'll broadcast a message called swoosh. And that's the basketball sprite telling the hoop sprite to go ahead and say swoosh. So when I receive swoosh for the hoop sprite, we'll just go to the purple looks category and have the basketball hoop say swoosh for eh, just for one second. That's kind of weird though. We still get a point even if the basketball comes up from the bottom of the hoop. We really only want it so that the basketball has to be coming down through the hoop before it scores a point. So we're going to add one more condition to this if block. So we'll go to the green operator section, grab another and, put this and block in that and block. And we want the basketball to be moving down. That means the basketball falling speed variable has to be equal to zero or less. So we'll have to go to the operator section, grab this less than, and we'll just have basketball falling speed. We'll just say it has to be negative. So if it's less than zero, and that will be the full condition of that if block. So the basketball has to be moving down, which we can tell is, is happening if basketball falling speed is negative and made basket has to be false, and it also has to be touching the hoop center. 
Let's test that out one more time. I'm going to hide these variables because we don't really need them. Great. And yet, if we go from the bottom and up through the hoop, it doesn't count. So that's our entire basketball game. You can add more code to fix the cat from throwing the basketball to the <laughs> to the left when the cat is facing to the left. That's kind of well, it's a trick shot. Cat can even make baskets backwards. Oh, except that time. Except that time. Wow, I'm really lousy at this game. Okay, but I hope you found this screencast to be helpful, and you can find more screencasts at inventwithscratch.com. I'm Al Swigert. Thanks for watching.